So if you guys wouldn't mind telling me how the wild horses came together. Hmm. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, I was back at the Vets Club in the uh, fall of 17, I think, and open mic was going on, and she walked in, and a bunch of old dudes doing the same thing, and started singing her songs, and then we kind of just kind of went from there, I guess. 2015, I had just come off of my own little tour and playing music independently, playing a lot of open mics in Wilson, North Dakota, came back to Grand Rapids, and there was open mics every Thursday at the VFW in Wax Jed. It was bass drum and acoustic guitar, singing his songs, and I, I always kind of liked him from then on. And that was how that, you know, Jed and I's connection was made. Yeah, it was, uh, it was kind of this thing where I figured at some point we were gonna do something together, musically. Same thing with JJ, too. It was like just this inevitable thing of like, someday we'll do something. Well, that was a night in uh, July of 2020. I think we were all just kind of coming out of quarantine. And um, I think, would that have been one of the first times you two played together? Yeah, that's Jed was. and Ari. I believe it was. It was uh, Charlie Parr at RBC. McKeon was playing also. And. Uh, we kind of got a little fire started that night mm -hmm. and uh, discussing what it would look like with a full, if you took the the emotion, rawness, and just the overall beautiful songwriting that you two had together and what that would look like as a full band. I mean, that's a testament of it. Like, I, I just sat in a chair and got rained on and didn't care at all. I just watched Jed and Ari. Yeah. sing and make beautiful music and, and obviously JJ picked up on that too and I ran into Jed in May of 2021. He mentioned that he wanted to start a band and that he'd like me to play bass in it. And I said, oh sure Jed, I'll play bass in your band. I played bass, you know, on my own recordings and played bass in other bands my whole life. And, and he threw the old left hook at me that he wanted me to play upright bass. <laughs> and to be perfectly candid, I told Jeb that number one, I don't have one. Number two, I do not know how to play the upright bass. And in typical Jeb fashion, he just put his hand on my shoulder and said, I'll drop one off for you. <laughs> then I kind of got the news that we were actually already booked to play Riverfest. Some things that I was struggling with in my life. I really needed to put energy into something, and so I put it all into playing bass in this group. And me trying to translate electric guitar to electric bass to upright bass, which is how I taught myself how to play the thing. It's kind of similar. For me, I played keys or piano for years up until that point. I taught myself, but then when we started, after we got married, when we started kind of playing music together, I was like, I feel like this project really needs a fiddle. And so I decided it was time to teach myself how to play fiddle. And I feel like that's kind of like the novelty of this project is like all of us, at least us three, are coming at this from like super fresh places. Initially when I played music, I never, I was like, not doing drum set, never, you know, like that was just, that was all the like, you know, the bands that I liked until they had drums in them. And I remember talking with JJ, there was always kind of that thing of like, I think we're gonna do something musically someday. And I remember getting together and just kind of like, feel like I need to give in to this, um, what he's bringing to the table. And uh, and then it just opened up a whole new door of like dynamic and where we can take these songs. Cause there was things in my head I could hear um, that, you know, 
my hollow old guitar and a little drum isn't going to take me there, you know. And so it's kind of neat bringing that level, and even with uh, the way McKeon plays a bass, too, like, there's a whole new approach, super melodic, super um, delicate at times, even, that just totally define um, us as a band together. I think it makes something pretty cool and unique. You know? The first official gig as Wild Horses was the Grand Rapids River Fest, which was the first year that they had done it in 2021. And it was like, yeah, we don't even have a band name yet, but can we play in this with you guys? And so, um, so that was the first gig, which was like, I think way bigger than we expected. But then I would say that the response from that was way more than we could have ever imagined. Like the, yeah, the, not just the crowd that showed up, and the people that were there, but then the response after, and then the progression of that, and what that, the boost that that was for all of us, I would say was bigger than we ever could have expected or dreamed. Yeah, it was a defining moment. I think we, we did, we, we worked hard in rehearsing and everything else, and then when we hit the stage and did that gig, it was like this, you know, we were kind of, that, I think it was a week after, we were quitting our jobs, living in a van, and we're like, we're gonna do music, and it was like, that show was like, this is what we're doing, this is the project, this is what we're gonna chase, it just, this is, we just, it made it so clear, I think. We had a captive audience, you know, it was pin drop stuff, mm -hmm. and so, we obviously had to be polished, and we obviously had to have the dynamics together. Personally, one of my favorite things about this band is that there are such dynamic songs. Highs and lows, and volumes dipping in and out, and stuff like that. And um, again, at the Rife, it was sort of an all eyes on us experience, and we had to be there together to make it work the way that songs beg to be heard so they could just go and grab a beer in the middle and <laughs> no, I'll catch the next song like you were there for it oh it was an experience if this dark so cold in the past I remember distinctly and maybe this is the same for you guys but playing at Sir Ben's in Duluth mm -hmm. you're gonna say that because that is when the chemistry really came about. I mean, we were playing a, a packed bar in the little tiny little stage, just the four of us. And we're like walking in the door behind and like holding the door for him. It's a cold night, come on in. To me, that was a solidifier to now what we've created is, is bigger than myself or ourselves. It's a thing. And um, I want to continue to be a part of it and the horizon is bright and I want to chase it. It's, it's, they're all a good time. Um, I will say Man in the Mirror is one of my favorite songs to play live. Um, we typically, one of, one of my favorite songs, <laughs> except when like, when Jed says something like tambourine solo in front of 200 people and I'm like, yeah, I don't Tamri thing. I'm still working on getting warmed up to that. But the energy and the crowd participation and the, the smiling faces and the, the crowd chanting the O's along with us is one of my favorite things on the planet. I would say that And It Rain probably has the most fiddle lines that I really enjoy playing. Um, and plus it's just a high energy song and there's some harmonizing, it's really dynamic. Uh, it's got a bit of a western feel, it's just got all the works. But the other one that I really love is when we play Wedding Song together. That's the song that we wrote when we got married and we sang it to each other during the ceremony. Every time we play that on stage, just him and I, I, I feel like I, I get lost in it. and. And it's almost like, I feel like when you're about to die, you go through all of these memories of your whole life. And that's kind of what that song does for me is I just I walk through all of the moments, the good and the bad of our times together. Came strong like the winter Melted like the spring, the sun away
I think for me, The Ledge is maybe my favorite right now, just because that song is really how the project, the newness of this project came about. Because we brought in a few of my kind of older songs to kind of fit the narrative of the music we were making, but The Ledge was kind of like the kickoff to Wild Horses. And the, the, the new sound and the new, it starts as this, as this kind of uh, quiet, understated thing, which follows the pattern of a lot of our lives at the time. We're kind of froze, um, froze kind of solid and maybe calling it quits and, and the whole um, kind of like had nothing left really. And, uh, and then it busts just wide open and hits the ground running. favorite song to play live is War Paint. And what I like about War Paint is the story in and itself. I love getting behind that story and helping tell it. Like I said, that is uh, another very dynamic song. Lots of highs and lows, lots of delicate kind of slow downs and volume changes. It's fun for me to play bass on that song because I get to be melodic, and I get to be delicate, I get to play with pedals, um, but then I also get to be really hard hitting, and you know, as you've seen our live shows, at the end we just, we just pour it all out. So that's obviously so fun to do as a musician, just get your teeth and dig in. Yeah, the record was um, just kind of inevitable after after we got going with things. We were like, we need a record so we can get out and tour and, and then do this whole thing. So McKean had a good friend uh, named Kai who kind of got moved up here during COVID and bought a little taxidermy shop and doing the studio thing. And, and uh, I believe you said to me, if you want a more romantic experience making the record, we should go up to Kai's and do it. And so that's what we did. We just we hopped up to the shop, and he was sort of building out the space as we were sort of building out this band. And it was the whole sort of metaphor of like we're just we're making something here. It's funny to think of what we've done so far. We don't even have a record out, but once we have that, of how far we can ride this thing and see where it goes, I guess. We're still learning our instruments and learning the songs and writing the songs in the recording process, <laughs> but that almost made it more beautiful in a way. We got to spend the winter making this thing and now that all the stones are set, I think we're really excited and proud to release it here soon. I just learned this couch was in the barn we filmed the war paint video in. I guess this couch has been around. Oh well, yeah, it's kind of been along for the ride with us because this was, we have one like prominent promo photo I would say that we use the most and it's us sitting on this couch when we hauled it out to our field that we have back on our land underneath the the arbor that we got married under actually and so this couch is kind of a, a symbol we actually got offered a gig in helena montana and montana western north dakota are near and dear to my heart and i thought if we're going to go all the way to helena we better make it worthwhile in some form or fashion, which meant making a tour out of it, right? The West is, is close to all of our hearts because we've got a little bit of a spaghetti Western feel to us. We love the mountains. We love hitting across a vast prairie landscape, rugged, bad land landscape. And we hit that transition of the mountains. And that is where we want to bring our music. Our homecoming show is going to be River Fest after our first tour at West. Full circle. Yeah, it's going to be wild. <laughs> In one year. For one year, For one year yeah. One year. Yeah, put out the record and head out, come back and do it. It'll be fun. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's exciting. But there's so much diligence involved. In it. We're pretty happy to do it. I think we'll always be able to look back and say, like, we worked for it, for sure. Uh, you know, doing that, piling and in the van and pulling that trailer and pumping gas out when it hurts and just kind of like, you know, working for it. 
we're starting to see the value in it and, and the momentum and it I think ultimately just feels like the right thing to do. And I just can't believe the support that we've had from the beginning in that hard work, the people that have backed us, specifically from this community. They've come behind us and showed us that they're for us and that they're gonna ride along with us. We're incredibly grateful.